<clears throat> All right. So, uh, Tessu basically says his lane face sucked dick, and he wanted to fix that shit. Um, if, so help me God, if he doesn't start a fucking camp after all the Trindamir that I've been playing on this damn stream, I swear Maybe to God. I swear to Jeebus, if he doesn't start a fucking... If you don't start a fucking camp, dude. I play Trendemir every day! I play it every day! Start a camp! Start a camp! A camp! No! Get away from there, dude. Start a camp. Start if you're not starting a camp as Trendemir, you start you start the chickens, you start the wolves, you start the fucking golems. You start the fucking other wolves, you start the fucking chickens, the go in here and start and fuck with a moo moo. I don't give a fuck, start a camp. Start a camp, dude. Alright, look, check it out. If you're not starting a camp as Trindomir Top. That's cool. But you need to take Ignite then. You need to take Ignite. Um, <clears throat> the reason, and for those who don't understand, the reason why we start camps as any top laner is you get a level lead. Like, if the other laner doesn't start a camp and you do, you're ahead in XP. I harp on this and all my sh all my coaching sessions and everything. You have to get a, any opportunity to get an XP lead, especially in a solo queue environment, you gotta take it. Because that's how you carry games. Six minion, you should be spinning. Alright, let's back this up. <clears throat> I appreciate that you're trying to learn Trinomir, okay? Check it out. This is what I do. This is how I view top. It doesn't matter if I'm playing Trinomir. It doesn't matter. If I know, and this is your XP bar, you can see at the bottom, le the bottom left. If I know that, um,. I'm gonna hit two, right? If I know that I'm gonna hit two, the other guy's not gonna hit two. You see his minions, right? You need uh, a wave, you see you need seven minions, okay? In order to hit level two. So, as you're getting close, this is like, this is standard lane pressure. And here's the thing, I'm teaching you guys something that's very cheesy, okay? For some reason though, even though this is something that like decides the fate of your lane for the next five minutes, people fuck this up all the time. And I don't know why. Trendomir, as soon as you auto, this is how this should look. You're gonna you're gonna wait until that minion's low. As it's low, you don't even have to auto. Once it's low enough, you're gonna E forward. You're gonna E forward right away. And what you should be thinking is as you do these like level two types of situations. If you're facing someone with some sort of CC, knockup, whatever, um, say it's Ari, say, or it's Lux, right? Say it's Morgana, she starts Q. As you go forward, it doesn't matter what lane you're on, the first thing you're thinking is, if I grest on me right in this spot. So like, once I hit that minion, I turn level two, and I grest as level two, the first thing that this guy's gonna do is panic, and he's probably gonna throw his Q. Now, in this case, if you'd spun forward, he would've whiffed his Q completely. So all you have to do is auto, E forward, and prepare to dodge the, the, the knockup. That's it. So you can preempt it a little bit. Auto, E forward, then step to the side, then move at Cho'Gath and deal as much damage as possible. But <clears throat> what you do instead is you just, it's not, this is a pivotal thing for all lanes. This level 2 shit, this decides the lane. And you won't get aggressed on, you like silver and gold guys, you won't get aggressed on at level 2 because people don't understand like where their power spikes are. This game is all about power spikes. So you need to be thinking about level 2. If the lane's pushing towards you and your Cho'Gath, dude, you can't be this close. Like Cho'Gath can't be this close. And Tessu, you have to go in. Like you have to auto spin in and like be prepared to dodge the knockup. Cho'Gath won't be level 2. So this is like... You could even you could kill you could kill this guy, even though you didn't start a camp. You could kill this guy. In this spot. All right. Very 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 important. Uh, 
Oh, if he got Q level 1, too, that's a mistake. Yeah, I didn't even notice that. But yeah, start E. Alright, now we're looking at the lane. Let's see how this goes now. In my opinion, you should have probably already got a flash or something out of this Cho'Gath. Based off what I'm seeing so far. Let's speed it up a little bit. It's a Moo Moo jungle, not too scared of that. Now here's uh, here's the thing. You decided to stop pushing and let Cho'Gath push. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, times where this is actually good to let somebody push into you, um, especially like a mobile tops like Cho'Gath. It's great. Uh, the only problem with this particular instance where you're not pushing into the turret is that you don't really have a jungler that's going to be doing anything with this. It's Warwick jungle. He isn't doing shit. And then alternatively. It's not like you're defending... Say you have a Warwick jungle, and they have, like, a Lee Sin jungle. I could understand maybe not wanting to push. Maybe you're inexperienced with dealing with, you know, with dealing with ganks from an aggressive jungler, and you don't want to risk throwing the lane out of whack. Like, I'm on board with that. The only problem is Amumu, if you die to an Amumu gank early, it's all your fault. Especially as Trinomir. It's your fault. I say welcome a gank top early and play, play solid. Because, let's face it, this is Flash, Teleport, Cho'Gath, Pre-6, and this is uh, Moo Moo Jungle Pre-6. What are you afraid of? And you're Trindamere. You got, a, you got a massive escape. You can dodge pretty much all the CC. Um, so, I don't recommend letting the lane push. Which is what you're doing here. Okay, little juke. I would have liked... Alright, let's back up that trade a little bit. Remember what I talked about with, uh, with levels? Alright, so here's the thing about this. Same concept. If you want to go in on Cho'Gath and you want to test his skill shot skills uh, in the middle of lane phase, that's great. The only thing is... There's a few problems with the way you went about it in this spot. So, minions, 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 right? You got about a minion or two until you're level four as well. And your E is on a seven second cooldown from here. This game is all about managing aggressions within cooldown timings, okay? And level, like in lanes, like early lanes, like I was talking about earlier, about managing like when you hit levels. If you want to go in with Trinomir with your rage and you want to really dish out the pain, your entire, your entire arsenal needs to be ready to roll. That includes cooldowns, that includes if you're spiking a level, so if you want to challenge somebody, that's great, and I encourage that. Uh, I think that's how lower elo guys like learn their limits. You need to think about your levels and your cooldowns. I take all this shit in consideration. I'm like, okay, I want to go in, but I want my E before I really go in. Alright, so like, here, you start autoing, right? You do a little auto, you call him a chicken to his face, don't know why you do that, you don't need to do that. I would have autoed, then autoed the range creep a couple times, spin forward, then use your, uh, then call him a chicken, dude. Call him a stupid chicken. But you see you're keeping your cooldown staggered, so it's putting you in this weird spot where you can't really get damage off, and you didn't go ahead and finish off the level 4, so that's base stats that you miss. Okay? Stop spinning onto him without a purpose. There's no purpose. Alright, look. What's the point? What's the point of spinning there? There is no point. Is he... he okay, he can't outwalk you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna freeze frame this shit for you. Look at this. This is stuff you gotta be thinking about. Managing your shit. He can't outrun you. Walk at him. Just walk at him. If you want to attack him, walk. Just walk down. Don't spin. Just walk down. Then, you auto him. He gets critic a couple times. He says, oh shit. Then he's going to try to do his knockup. You spin over that shit. Chicken him. Beat his ass. 
don't don't waste cooldowns. Like every every time you use a cooldown, have a purpose. Okay, watch. Watch this random spin. Like why? You could have just walked over and slapped him. And then here here it is, right here. Now look. Now you can't dodge that. Now you can't dodge the uh, rupture because you wasted your spin. Fucking walk. Cracker. Walk. All right. <clears throat> so, Amumu's going to look to try to gank you. Let's see how you react here. You spin away immediately, which I don't mind. That's fine. You never know. All right, so uh, Warwick's coming up. This is where it's tricky. He's coming up. He's coming up. He's coming up. Now, you know you know Cho'Gath is coming, and you know Amumu's got to be in there. What the hell is this reaction? All right. This is so goofy. All right. <clears throat> Similar concept. Similar concept. Your cooldowns need to serve a purpose. All right. Here it is. Now, you didn't attack right away, which means you weren't thinking. You didn't think he could be here, but he most certainly could. He ran up through a ward into Tribrush. So unless he literally checked Tribrush and rushed down, um, that's like the only way that you aren't going to find him somewhere over here. So you have to be prepared that he could be in any point of this area, like any point of the jungle in here. This is the only place that he can really be at this stage of the game. So... You need to be more prepared, like mentally. Like, you gotta think about this stuff. Um, he could be over here, he could be over here. The other thing, I don't know if you realize, dude, but Trindomir has this neat little trick where he can check bushes without even being in them. Alright, so check it out. Amumu does this weird derpy shit where he goes in the brush. You know what Trindomir does? You can't see it in this replay. His W turns on if someone's near you. It shows that you can chicken him. So you should have known that Amumu was in the brush. You shouldn't have been surprised that he was in that brush. You could have very easily just... You could have walked over and just autoed into the brush and probably just got him. Now, all that out of the way. You go in. You kind of flop this a little bit. You call him a chicken. Now wait, why do you just spin? Why do you just spin there? This makes no sense to me. What are you spinning for? What's the purpose? Are you applying red buff? Are you securing a kill? Are you sure that Cho'Gath isn't right here? You already know. You know he's there. He isn't in lane. I don't know why he isn't the, He isn't in lane pushing, but he isn't in lane. All right? So once you once you say, you're a bitch, Amumu, once you call him a chicken, you, you don't want to spin there because that lines up the easiest combo of Cho'Gath's life. The part of Trindomir that makes him so good is that he's really, really mobile. And if you dodge a couple skill shots, the skirmish is done. Like, you've won the skirmish. So, having said all that, as you, as you chicken him, if you're going into an area that you don't have vision of, you need to be thinking about, like, what can happen? What happens if Cho'Gath's coming? When I'm in these spots... When I'm in these spots, here's what I'm thinking. It doesn't matter what champ you're on, all right? You need to be thinking whenever you engage in a skirmish, who's following and like what is their the what is the reaction going to be when they get to you? How are they if you don't only think about this is the key to winning the skirmishes and this is how you like win like early game, okay? When you're chasing somebody, you need to not only think about what this guy's doing to run, but you need to also be managing this this, this follow-up, all right? It doesn't matter who it is. If it's Cho'Gath, if it's Morgana, any skill shot-based champions, you need to be thinking ahead. It doesn't matter even if it's a skill shot. Who is following and what are they going to do when they get to you? That's what you need to be thinking about. In this spot, 
if I'm chasing a Mumu here, this is how I would have played it. Auto here. I mean, you, you misplayed mechanically, but that's okay. Auto a couple times. Auto, auto, right? Then, if he's spacing away, yes, call him a chicken, but follow and wait for Cho'Gath to make a very obvious rupture. He has no choice but to rupture there because Amumu's going to get red buff applied, right? So all you have to do is once you slow him, you just walk up and start autoing. Auto, auto, auto. Cho'Gath doesn't have ignite, so this should be very, very easy to get away pre-6 if it becomes bad. Um... And you have a Warwick with red. I think that I would challenge this if I dodge the rupture or if I dodge any portion of skill shots, I'm just going to go in and fight. Because red buff, red buff, Warwick, and Trinomir versus Cho'Gath and Amumu with blue buff, I'm giving the nod to these two every time if, only if you play it, if you play it correctly. And here, I don't think you did. Because now, if you had your spin and you went forward auto, auto, right? Auto away. Cho'Gath's going to come out. He's going to silence you. All you have to do is do a little stutter step, wait for the knockup, and keep autoing. Wait for the knockup. Once the knockup comes, he is fucking checkmated, dude. Once the knockup comes, he's done. But because you wasted your E, oh, you still had your E, and you didn't use it. So your E even came off a cooldown. Regardless, all you had to do in this fight to win it is to dodge the knockup. If you spun out of the knockup right here to the brush, nothing they could do. Amumu, one hit. If he flashes, you flash. You secure the kill to turn on Cho'Gath, who has cooldowns uh, and skill shots that you can easily outplay. That's it. That's it. See that? There's that flash, and you would have had that kill. That would have been first blood, 400 gold to you. Oh, he didn't have the E? Well then, yeah, that's great. If, if the E was just bugged because of the replay viewer, then yes, all the more reason to save the E. Okay? I was going to say, it should have been up again. And he could have he could have flashed the Rapture, but I don't think fla flashing the Rapture is, necessary, uh, is a necessary thing. If you're flashing it, that just further proves my point that you should have just had the fucking E in the first place. Right? There's no need to E. Every time you do those like gap close cooldowns, they need to have a purpose where you don't do them. They need to have a clear purpose. Like I said, if you're spinning because you know that you're going to get that kill, that's something different entirely. If you're spinning to dodge a skill shot to aggress, that's something different entirely. If you're spinning to be defensive, that's okay too. But don't just spin and throw yourself in an awkward spot. It's one of the biggest mistakes that like lower elo guys make is that they'll either flash in a dumb way, they'll fucking blow their gap closes in a dumb way, they don't understand that once you've thrown yourself out there, unless you're getting a kill or securing like some huge setup for your team, there's not, you can't do that. Like, no, just fucking no, don't do it. It's bad. I play with these guys and every other game, I see one of their friends of mine and every other game I see, this is like uh, outside of stream and stuff. I play with my friends and they're lower elo guys. And every other game, I see them try to force a play that doesn't make any sense. Because they just think, I gotta make plays. But it's not... It's, it's, it needs to be... You need to be like a chess player with your cooldowns. And you need to think about, like, why am I doing this? Like, what's it going to look like? Like a fucking, like a fucking table, dude. It's like, if I do this, he'll do this. I'll do this, he'll do this. Do I think I win there? Yes, I'm going for it. It's just... Playing the cooldowns over and over again. Now, that said, um, since Cho'Gath left his wet lane pushed like this, um, you could have simply just danced around and didn't even try to fight necessarily, and it would have been worth uh, regardless. So it's good that you didn't die because he's missing a lot of XP. Uh, well, he's not even going to miss that much, I guess. I guess it just kind of slow pushed to him, so it kind of works out. If you would have killed him, uh, it would have been huge, though. Because he would have had to burn TP. Alright. Got no problem with spinning to get back in the lane. That's great. Um, I'm not sure I get the intent of your build, but... 
I think that at this stage of the game, it would have made sense to rush Averse Blade, personally. Um, Averse Blade and a few pots, as opposed to Bamp Step and a few pots. Uh, but I guess I guess Vamp Step is okay, because you don't want to get pushed into too hard by Choga. Eh, I don't know. I guess Vamp Step isn't that bad. It could be okay, if you're not confident. Cho I'm not gonna lie, Chogath is one of my favorite lanes to play against this Trinomir. It's probably, it's honestly, it's probably a lane that you counter. Um, because, okay, look, Chogath's mid, what are you doing? Let's see how long it takes you to react to this. Teleport mid, Chogath's mid, he's pinged it. There it is, okay. So you did push eventually, but Chogath gets up there. Not much you can do about that. It's a weird teleport. I'm glad you just pushed in general. Um, very, like I said, very strange teleport. It's not, it's not a common thing for people to teleport in that spot, so it's okay. No, I, I can't really harp on you too hard for that. So Graves gets a double kill bot, and I believe Warwick gets a kill as well. You're doing the funky spin shit again. Where are you going? Alright. Uh, no. Nope. This doesn't make any sense. Alright. I get that you want to be like me and farm shit. I get that, but this isn't good enough. You need to push to the turret before you start doing these roams. I actually wouldn't mind this if you push to the turret first. I would think it's fine, but you didn't push to the turret, so you're just wasting free XP. You're just taking your jungler's XP and wasting the XP that's right in front of you. So get that, push this to the turret first. Cho'Gath can't just fucking all in you 100 and owe you without a guy, and he just went mid. So fucking push this shit, then go and do golems. You missed like three CS that you didn't have to miss. That's XP that you didn't have to miss. Now you're behind a level, so I don't expect too much. Cho'Gaff's gonna heal up. That's a pretty good spin. Good choice, good choice to back away there. Nothing you could do. I didn't mind that fight too much. Um, you ulted a little early, but what can you do? You're not perfect. You have teleport. You need to teleport top. Why aren't you teleporting top? As you're backing, buy menu needs to be open. You touch down. Items need to appear. Bam, bam, bam. Teleport needs to be happening now. This took... Yeah, this took about 10 seconds too long. This this type of stuff is key. Uh, in laning is top. You can't miss this much. You can't miss this much farm. That's unacceptable. And you missed like 5 CS. Let's look at it again. Look how long it takes. See that? Bring open the buy menu. Once they, once you know for sure you can't die, bring open the buy menu and start getting ready. Alright. Alright, what happens here? Cho'Gaff shows up with a red buff that he got from your boy Mumu. You know what red buff means? Red buff means we're not trading anymore. That's what that means. Red buff says no trade. No trade arena. Alright? So your decision to go in here and battle a little bit is really bad. We don't trade. Once he starts aggressing you, you back the fuck up. You don't trade. Trading is over. 
You will lose every fight versus red buff. Unless the guy makes a huge error. And you're like two levels ahead of him. You'll lose just about every fight with red buff. Cho'Gaff doing a sneaky thing, sitting in the brush. Strange Flash. Um, you're very, very lucky that he didn't decide to feast you right away. Uh, in this spot, let's see what you try to do here. Um, you know he doesn't have flash. Alright. <clears throat> so let's talk about this spot. Now that we're behind, it sucks, Dick. But, um, here's the thing. It's all the same, uh, type of stuff. Your teammate is baiting you into something that you're in no zero position to win. Alright, there's no position to win here. He's trying to help you, which is, it's just, it's the curse of the lower elo. He's trying to help you, but he doesn't have an ult. He doesn't have an ignite. He doesn't have a flash. You're facing Cho, and, and you don't have to know that he doesn't have an ignite or flash. Because, I mean, you can't know that. But you certainly can know that he doesn't have an ult. And you can certainly know that you don't have any chance of uh, surviving this. And I'm pretty sure your ult is on cooldown. Yeah, because you used it a second ago. You, even, like, even if you have your ult, um, this is just so risky. This is so risky because you know that Ziggs doesn't have his ult, and this guy is so fucking big right now. Like, what if, like, you don't have vision of a Mumu, you don't know where he is. Like, this is so dangerous to try to force this. You should have just spam pinged back and just let Cho'Gaff, like, take a couple chunks out of your turret. That would have been the correct thing to do there. But Ziggs just baits you into some shit and then you play right into it without thinking like, what's gonna happen when I come forward? Like, it's pointless. It's a pointless room. Ziggs should be in mid. Alright, so, Cho'Gath is at Dragon. Cho'Gath is at Dragon, so you're pushing, which is great. If you're behind this Trindomir, there's no harm in pushing and hoping your team can survive for a little bit longer than they should. That's okay. Push, 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 push. Uh, good decision to run. Your teammate's trying to help warn you about Kale, which is really nice of him. You didn't have to do that. Go into Golems. I don't mind that right there. That's fine. You're behind. And you get in lane to defend. But then you try to trade. Cho'Gath is now a level ahead of you, and he's one of those tanky champs that once he gets ahead of you, um, there is no... There is no battling him anymore without a jungler. That's just how it goes, man. And that's why you need to time your aggression smarter in the early levels so that you don't let him get to this stupid point where he's miles ahead of you and he's tanky as shit. Your farm isn't great, but it's okay. Um... Could be better, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Nothing I'm gonna harp on you too hard about. This isn't the time to spin into him. It's just not the time to spin into him. 
If you were level 12, I'd say go for it. Now I would. Now I would battle. If you really wanted to battle. If you were going in because his ult was on cooldown, that's okay, but it's thin. You're never gonna kill him. <clears throat> You're never gonna kill him unless he makes a huge error in judgment. You're never gonna kill him. Uh, the other thing is your team, um, your team isn't like really losing too bad. Your bot lane's doing decent. Ziggs isn't like feeding out of his mind. And uh, you have a Warwick jungle, so you don't have to make any fancy risks. And that's a spot where I don't think it's a very good, uh, that's a spot where I don't think it's a very good aggression idea. I wouldn't do it. Have Blade of the Rune King, which makes you a little bit more dually. Now, let's talk about talking yourself into aggression. Well, you know where the enemy team is, pretty much. So if you want to battle this guy, now's the time. Now's your window. It's good that you stopped your aggression once you got knocked up. Okay, once he misses the skill shot, now he's a level ahead of you. I wouldn't go too crazy. Wouldn't go too crazy. Poking's fine, but I wouldn't expect much. This would be the type of lane I'd consider going Hydra in. Um, the main reason is because Cho'Gath is kind of, is kind of slow to rotate, slow to clear, especially when he's on his back foot. So, and also he's not mobile, so you don't need Blade of the Rune King. Uh, I think in, in, in the spot where you're behind, I think it would have probably been better to just go Hydra so you don't miss like any CS. And you can even pressure your enemy's jungle. Same logic applies. What are you, what are you, what are you, like, what are you afraid of? You have fucking, you, you have a Moo Moo jungle and Cho'Gath. You can dodge all their shit. Um, also, uh, fucking tenacity boots. You shouldn't be challenging here, you should be running. You're very, very lucky that Cho'Gath doesn't just like blow his load on you. Uh, right away because it's gonna make the fights a lot uglier for you like I just don't think he's very confident in his abilities You don't have ult you back away like it's great that you got his flash, but you are so lucky that this guy won't fucking You're so lucky this guy won't just blow his load right away like that's what he should be I, I Actually like his ultimate because he was anticipating the Cho'Gath ult which means he's thinking ahead which I'm totally cool with it's whatever. If the guy doesn't ult when he thinks he's gonna ult, then that's just... That's kind of a gamble you run sometimes as Trinomir. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. I always appreciate when players think ahead. Alright. <clears throat> this is a spot where... I know you don't have your ult. Um, I think it's often safer to just back down just back down yep and now you're gonna aggress yeah no. so you don't have your ult you aggress your turret was really low and you aggress you had no vision to choke after you aggress um it's a mumu who's about the same level as you with frozen heart which means that your attack speed is slower uh i think that that's an, a simple no-go that's a no-go there i'm afraid Hey, what's up, Muzzy? Alright. <clears throat> I'm gonna watch a little bit more of your uh, Trendomir and then I'll call it. Uh, we don't have to see the result. 
Because you said your emphasis was on improving the lane phase. So I'm going to focus on that for now. And nothing else. The result is meaningless. Okay, so you're going aggressive on Cho'Gath. You have your ult. I like I like the aggression. At, it's it's better timed at 14, and you back down when the gank came, which I think is great. I think it's great that you went ahead and just pushed your limits a little bit. Um, since you're not going the Hydra build, it's not the worst thing in the world. But yeah, this is dangerous. Yep. Now, <clears throat> I would have liked this so much. Look what you could have done. I know you have vision of this guy. Hold on. I know you have vision of this guy right here. This is all you had to do. Alright? When you're coming forward, if you're trying to stop the ports, if you're trying to trick 2G this shit, all you need to do is step forward and dodge this, this Cho'Gath, this Cho'Gath rupture, and then you can just dance around. Okay? But getting hit by the rupture is a no-go. That's the only thing. Like... Here's the thing about Cho'Gath versus Trinomir. There's a reason that it's like considered a counter in favor of Trinomir is because all you have to do as Trinomir is dodge that rupture, and it's so easy with Trinomir, dude. It is so easy. It's so difficult for Cho'Gath to hit you. Okay? So that's your biggest... That's your big thing. Just dodge the Cho'Gath, the rupture, and you're good. But here, I like the idea of trying to stop the ports. Just don't give them an opportunity to kill you, though. And like I said, for some reason, this dumbass won't feast you. I don't know why he won't do it. Oh, he did actually feast you that time. That time he did. And you got really, really fortunate. Because <clears throat> Amumu, uh, Amumu did have ult there. Did you really just endless rage to fucking... Wait, no, you didn't even have to do that. Like, I'm all for it. Uh, let's see. Alright, here's what you do. You want to try for this? Don't endless rage. Step here. Auto. Spin. Auto. Q. And you should be fine. And if you're not, don't waste endless rage on this. This is so dumb to me. This is, will still be here. Alright? You could have... Alright, look. You could have backed... You could have backed anyways. Like, if you don't even want to risk dying to this, you could back and then just come forward. Clear this wave, which you know is pushing, and then come and take this and have your ultimate up. Your ultimate is a big part of what... You see me in, in my games. You see me save it all the time on purpose in, like, the thinnest spots because it's that important. So don't just waste it on fucking creeps. That's not good. That's not good. Don't do that. Also, do the uh, small camp first. Do the small camp first. They do about the same damage. Also, um, I'm a firm, firm believer of Merc Treads. Uh, Berserker Greaves don't do shit for you. Merc Treads do a fuck ton for you. So make it a habit to go Merc Treads. It's better. You need to go Static Shiv, second item, as opposed to Ghost Blade. Static Shiv, the reason you go Static Shiv normally is the second item is because it makes it harder to itemize against you. So anybody that builds, like, anybody that goes full armor, look, Cho'Gath went, like, Thorn Mail. He rushed, like, Thorn Mail on you. Okay, you're not going to kill him because he's just huge. But it, it, let's just pretend that he isn't as huge and he was building towards Thorn Mail. Static Shiv gives you a little bit more damage output that Ghost Blade does not. Also, additionally, uh, Static Shiv gives you more move speed, which is a little bit better for split pushing than, uh, than Ghost Blade is. Team Spam pings you. You are making the right move. You are making the right move. Just keep running. The ult is good. Where's your... I don't know where your Blade of the Rune King is. I don't know why your team is following you. I have so many questions. So many concerns. Now... 
If you used Bite of the Rune King, you would have gotten out. If your team wasn't retarded, they could have just pushed down mid this whole time. They could have pushed down mid, t killed Graves, and then probably got an in-hip turret. This is, this is actually an example of when people don't know what to do with Trindamere. But Blade of the Rune King would have saved you too. And you wouldn't have died. Get this. You had teleport up, right? If you used Blade of the Rune King, the minute that you were at safety, you could have teleported bottom and started just shoving all the way to bottom, taking golems, pressuring the turret. Like, there's so much you could have done there if you just stayed alive with Blade of the Rune King. That's a huge spot, actually, to stay alive. So yeah, I think this is a good stopping point. Um, like I said, we're not really concerned about the results. It's also a game that's about an hour long. Let's uh, let's stop here. Lane phase needs a little work. Remember, time your aggression. I'm gonna get away from Trinomir's bullshit skin because he makes all sorts of noises. Remember to time your aggression with when you're gonna level up, and also time your aggression with your cooldowns and make like make a good sense of when you're gonna like gap close forward. Do it for a reason. Are you gap closing to hit like a big, a big slow or a big stun? Like say it's not just Trinomir. Are you gap closing to do something really significant? Because if you're not, you don't want to do it, right? If it's not going to be a kill, like right then and there, you don't want to do it. If it's not going to be a big play that's going to really make the difference, you don't just blow your cooldowns, okay? And then the other thing is, um, as Trinomir. Don't get married to the idea of just attack speed, attack speed, attack speed, like some of these other idiots that play Trindomir, okay? The best play style for Trindomir right now is to just go fucking Static Shiv, Blade of the Room King, Murtreds. That's it. And then from there, you know, you go Ghost Blade, you go Last Whisper, you go IE. That's the best way to play Trindomir, okay? This other shit with Berserker Greaves and all that nonsense, that, that, is, that isn't consistent. You want to be able to, the whole goal of Trindomir is to be able to push and then run away when people aggress you. You're not really looking to dive unless it's an absolute gimme. That's when, that's how you do that, all right? That's how you do that. Um, the other thing, make sure you start a camp because that shit doesn't make any sense to not start a camp. Um, just remember though, the counter, the counter to this is if you start a camp and die, it's pretty big. So you do change the game a little bit in favor of your, your level spike. Uh, just know what you're getting yourself into. And what was the last thing I wanted to say? Um, no, I, I think that's I think that's about everything. I mean, like I was saying before at the end here, stay alive. You stay alive and get away and then be prepared to teleport to a different lane when you're playing split push champs. That's always that's always a brilliant move. If you pull three people up here and you escape, you know, use your actives properly. Oh, by the way, if you had if you had Merc Treads when you got killed up here, you wouldn't have gotten killed, just to be clear. You would have lived. I, I guarantee you would have lived. Even though you got knocked up, I guarantee you would have still made it out. Um, but yeah, uh, that's everything for today. I hope that was really help you, helpful for you, Tessu. Uh, this will be on YouTube. You guys that have been watching the stream today, I really, really, really appreciate the support. Uh, it's nice to see the stream getting over 100 views, but I'm going to call it a session for tonight. I will be on tomorrow. I love each and every single one of you, even you. Even you. Uh, Trinditard. That's probably the best name I've heard all day. So, yeah, and you YouTube guys that are checking this out, this Law Replay review, all you got to do is tune into the live stream at twitch.tv slash Nisi. You can get in on the, all this shit. Uh, just be active in the chat, and I'll probably review your gameplay. Just make sure to send it to lawreplayreview at gmail.com. Uh, all the YouTube shit, you know, like, subscribe, tell your friends, fucking whatever, dude. All right? Peace, cracks.